Around the world, people are looking for leaders who are problem solvers, not politicians. Even here, 50% of Australians say we need a strong leader willing to break the rules. But what happens when countries actually do take a punt on a rule-breaking strongman? Let's find out in our new segment, World's Strongest Man. the Philippines. It's not just a place where the prison musicals are so good you'd think that dancing is a crime. <laughs> yeah, you laugh, but their last riot won three Tony Awards. <laughs> but if you think that's exciting, you should see their president. Nicknamed the Punisher, Rodrigo Duterte is a Harley-riding former city mayor who speaks his mind. Duterte! <laughs> but President Duterte, who was elected last year in a landslide victory, seems to have taken the concept of swearing in a little too literally. He's the straight-talking leader who called President Obama the son of a whore. The Philippines' new president isn't afraid to insult public leaders. Or Pope, you son of a whore. Go home. <laughs> yes. Obama and the Pope, role models to sons of whores everywhere. <laughs> So, how did Duterte capture the hearts and minds of Filipino voters? He ran on a campaign promising mass extrajudicial violence against criminal suspects, that he would fill Manila Bay with the bodies of thousands of criminal, criminals that he would execute. In the first three months of his administration, almost 3,000 people have been killed. Yeah, but it's always hard starting a new job. <laughs> you know, oh, I can't connect to the printer, I can't remember anyone's name, and I think I killed 3,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> Mondays. <laughs> Duterte's been president for eight months now and the body count from his drug war has risen to over 7,000. But he didn't just come out of nowhere. He was mayor of the third largest city in the Philippines for 22 years. He's got to know you can't just go around killing people. The Philippine president, Rodrigo Duterte, says he cruised the streets looking for criminals to kill when he was the mayor of Davao. In Davao, I used to do it personally. Just to show to the guys that if I can do it, why can't you? I don't know if you've... I don't know if you've ever had a boss murder someone in front of you, but let me tell you that the guys find it really motivating. <laughs> Leaders like this inevitably end up getting compared to Hitler, though they don't usually do it themselves. Hitler massacred three million Jews. No, there is three million, there's a three million drug addict. There are. I'd be happy to slaughter him. Yeah. Um, first off, your stats are wrong. Uh, secondly, you're comparing yourself to Hitler. <laughs> and thirdly, you're threatening to kill three million drug users, even though the UN says the Philippines only has 1.6 million drug users. Now, I don't mean to tell you how to run a death squad, but I think you might be confusing rounding up with rounding up. <laughs> but... <laughs> but Duterte has a plan to get away with it. Rodrigo Duterte is causing a stir by stating if he gets into office, he'll pardon himself for mass murder. During his speech, he reportedly said, Pardon given to Rodrigo Duterte for the crime of multiple murder. Signed, Rodrigo Duterte. P.S. You're the best president of all the presidents ever. <laughs> Love, Rodrigo Duterte. <laughs> but Duterte's mistakes aren't just about numbers. We've been told this unrelentingly hard call policy is leading to mistakes. Just five years old, Danica, her granddaughter, was shot in the back and killed. The gunman's target was her husband, who was on a police watch list as a user. Duterte calls tragedies like this collateral damage. And just this week, he's backed a bill that could see kids as young as nine be found to be criminally culpable and targeted in his war on drugs. So it's not surprising that more than 700,000 drug pushers and users have surrendered to authorities, although the jury's out on whether or not they're getting the best treatment. Rehabilitation services can't cope with the surge in numbers. So instead, they're sent to local sports courts like this every Sunday morning for an unlikely cure. A weekly class of Zumba is their only rehab. 
That's Zumba, the addictive Colombian dance fitness craze, not to be confused with Zumbo, notorious pusher of highly addictive <laughs> crock and bush. Now, you might think that in a democracy, leaders who think they're above the law are soon brought back down to earth. His public still seem to support his hardline policies. With an approval rating of 86%, he is one of the most popular presidents in the history of the country. 86%? an approval rating any politician would kill for and that Duterte has literally killed for. <laughs> but the bottom line is that strong leaders get results. You just have to be prepared to break a few rules and everything will work out great. Right, Rodrigo? Duterte! <laughs> 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 <laughs>